Mm, good. Uh, do you hear me? And do you see the page? Yeah. So, uh, do you hear me well? Yes, I hear you and I see the screen. Okay, you see the screen, correct? Yeah. Uh, great. Okay, so uh, let's start the class. Uh, good day. Let me look. Then I stuff. Put it here. Uh, great. So, uh, and we have uh, seen so far, I mean, several area of uh, algorithm design. Uh, we have started with MP hardness, I mean, PS based complete. And then uh, we talk about uh, streaming uh, approximation algorithms, uh, also something called fine grain complexity for polynomial time. And uh, now we are uh, going actually uh, the next topic which is a uh, fixed parameter algorithms and lower bounds for parameterized problems. But uh, first we need to define the area. So this is actually a good uh, introduction to that. So generally we have uh, several algorithmic goals that we are uh, considering. Uh, so just give me a second and uh, yes. Uh, good. So, um, what's the meaning of algorithmic goal? So we want to solve a problem. There are several, I mean, important things that we want to get. One is that we want to get the correct solution. Correct means generally optimal solution. Other thing is that we want to have a fast algorithm. Fast here, we mean polynomial time algorithms. And last but not least, we want to solve the problem which are hard problems which are most of the real world problems, which are uh, generally NP-hard problems. And unfortunately, we cannot have all of them together. So you need to, I mean, all of them is not possible as of as at the moment, but you can pick any two of them. So uh, let's see what will happen. So if you want to have a correct and fast algorithm, that would be actually most of uh, undergrad algorithms. And one of the most complicated in this class, this is still correct, you can find the optimum solution is fast, is the matching, and uh, the other one is the matroid intersection. Matroid intersection. Uh, so these are among the, this is the matching also, this is we consider the weighted graph. We have a weighted graph and general graph and you find find uh, matching a set of edges that the total weight is maximized. And none of them share any endpoints. These are some of the hardest in this class. Now, and let's consider the case that you don't want to get correct, but you want to get fast solutions and for the MP hard problem, for the real world problem. In this case, uh, we are relaxing the correctness and say, okay, you may not want to get the optimal solution, but you want to get near optimal solution. Near optimal means approximation algorithms that we talked about it before. And the best of them are something called p-tasses. P-tasses is one plus epsilon factor for any specified epsilon. So for any given epsilon, you want to get one plus epsilon approximation for the problem. And this exists for uh, some problem like knapsack or some planar graphs. Uh, lots of problems also we cannot get that close to epsilon for any epsilon, but we can get, I don't know, 1.1, 1.2, or other type of thing that we can get it from. And this is the hardest generally comes uh, from the PCP theorem that Professor Gassaj talked about. Last but not least is a case that we want to get correct solution and we want to get it for hard problem. Of course, the issue here is that uh, here, uh, we need to also relax. So we don't want to get 
pass means polynomial, but we want to get the best uh, running time. That would be the fixed parameter algorithm or fixed parameter tractable algorithm that we will call them FPT algorithms. And we will talk more about them in this session. So uh, in the uh, FPT algorithm, we generally have a parameter K and we want to get uh, solutions. So if I want to say in another word, uh, fixed parameter algorithms are the set of algorithms uh, for which uh, these are like a nice way of uh, somehow giving theory for backtracking algorithm or branch and bound algorithms. Somehow we want to limit <coughs> Uh, the exponential growth for these problems. So in particular, we have a parameter K. And this parameter K, you can think generally about the cost of the optimum solution. Say on weighted graph, you want to see the cost of the optimal solution. And you have N the size of the graph or the size of the, I mean, the whole instance. And you want to make sure that, I mean, this confine the exponential growth to only to parameter K. We will see an example here. So uh, uh, let's uh, give an example. So consider the click problem. For the click problem, I mean, what was the click problem that, so this is the click. And the goal is to, I mean, the click and dependence are just two similar problems, of course, uh, that you want to find the maximum set of vertices such that all of them are connected with each other. So this is the maximum number of vertices. That all of them should be connected with each other. And you want to maximize the number. So in that case, say K is the parameter that you want to get it. So like somebody asks you, is this graph has a click of size K or not? K would be the parameter here. So K would be the size of the click. So for now, we are assuming that K is given and the question is that whether there is a K click in the graph. But in some of this problem, you don't need to actually know K uh, in advance, uh, but you want that the algorithm that obtains the solution, the running time is still, it's uh, somehow dependent on K uh, without knowing K. So without knowing K, you want to get dependent on K. Lots of the cases is possible. But here for now, say so that whether we have a K click or not, K click essentially and K is given. So K click K is the parameter here. And N is the number of vertices of the graph. Right? Now, uh, so for this problem, I mean, we can uh, actually, for this one, we can get N to the K for click problem. And that we cannot do anything better. I mean, at least under some, some complexity assumption. So for clicks, this n to the k somehow is the best that we can hope for so far. Um, and this is not the best because uh, this for large n and k, then it would be uh, like n to the k it would be very large. Now, uh, the one that is good and we are thinking about fixed parameter algorithm is this one. We want to get f of k times n for the problem. So that's essentially the FPT. So FPT algorithm that we are talking about, so these are the FPT algorithm, we want to have a running time, which is F of K times N to some constant C. So C is a constant independent of Good. So uh, that's the one that we hope for. And actually, this problem, uh, we can do it for vertex cover. And we will talk about this algorithm. What is the problem vertex cover? So vertex cover, again, you are given a graph. You want to select a set of vertices such that uh, each vertex has at least one endpoint in the set. So each edge. as one endpoint in the set. So 
So that's the goal. And for this problem, the question is whether there's a K vertex cover in the graph. For that algorithm, actually, there is two to the K times N uh, algorithm. As we will discuss, this is better than also there is 1.2 to the K times N as well. But essentially, this is one of the good examples of uh, fixed parameter algorithm. There are several other things that we will talk about. Uh, last but not least, you might even get something better than that. So here, of course, this is still f of k, but instead of getting two to the k times n, we get two to the SQR root of k times n, even better than two to the k. This is, a, uh, this is called sub-exponential time algorithms, sub-exponential fixed parameter algorithm. And actually such a thing exists for vertex co cover, but in planar graphs. So this is the same, I mean, you can compare actually this one, nicely with this thing. So I mentioned there are some algorithms which have a PTAS. So the algorithm that generally they have, a, the graph that they have a PTAS for them, like for example, in plane graph, lots of problems have a PTAS. Then in that case, for those graphs, actually we can get some fixed parameter algorithm which are sub-exponential, two to the square root of k. And again, you can show actually, if you cannot get better than two to k in general graph, two to k times n or two to the square root of k, times n to the one for planar graph, for example, for vertex cover. This is the best that we can hope for uh, under, again, some complexity aspect. So that's the general idea that we are going for that. And uh, note that this f of k by uh, default, I mean, we expect that this is exponential in k. So it is exponential in and that is very important uh, because I mean, if this was not exponential, then the problem is actually uh, you can solve it in polynomial time uh, because then n to the c is just some polynomial and this is not exponential, so we can't solve it. So, so far we expect that all of this problem have exponential in, be exponential in k, like two to the k is one of the good things, but sometime if you can get a two to the s or root of k, that would be even better. Good, any question? Uh, another concept which is very, I mean, uh, related to this problem is the kernelization, the concept, concept of kernelization. So uh, kernelization actually is very similar to the concept of a sketch that you have already seen for a streaming algorithm. So uh, this like very similar to a sketch in uh, a streaming uh, algorithm that you want to get somehow the problem that is in a large graph, you want to somehow compress it into some smaller instance. So uh, what is the objective? So here, the, this is the thing. So you want to get into the order one. Again, order one should be constant, like something which is depend independent of k. Into the k time a pre-processing algorithm that reducing the size of the problem. So what was the size of the problem? The original is n and k, n is the size of the graph and k is the parameter, down to f of k, g of k. That's the important thing. So, uh, uh, so here you want to get like the actual problem. This is the graph g, like say, for example, n and k, or it can be, I mean, any other instance, it can be some string problems or other type of problems. But the size, which is n and k, you want to get it f of k, g of k. What's the meaning of that? Uh, the meaning is that uh, like you want to get some instance, such that the size of this instance is order only function of k, not function of n anymore. And g of k, generally g of k is some function, which is at most k. I mean, potentially can be even, uh, some uh, like k can be, like g of k can be more than k, but generally g of k is also uh, 
linear or sublinear in K. Uh, in some sense, we are just compressing this big instance here to some small instance. And the size of this would be dependent on K only. That would be only F of K versus N that we had it here. Now, if we have such a thing, and uh, by the way, that is important. Now, is this new instance that we get it? It should be if and only. So if there is a solution for this problem, there should be a solution for original problem. And if there is a solution for the original problem, there should be a solution for this problem. So this is this if and only if is very important to get it. So we don't want to just reduce it. We want to get some meaningful things out of it. Now, uh, uh, here, one interesting thing is that if you have a kernel, it means that there is an algorithm of running time n to the order one plus f prime of k. So that is actually we can get, so in a fixed parameter algorithms, we are getting essentially f of k n to the c. Here, in some sense, we are getting f prime of k plus n to the c. We get a plus action. Why is it the case? Because first you are essentially, you pay this n to the order one here that we discussed to reduce the, so here you are paying n to the order one to get a solution here. But then after that, the whole problem is a function of k. So even if you do any exponential time alg algorithm or anything, any algorithm that you are doing, it would be f prime of k. So we are paying this n to the order one plus, is f prime of k. So that's essentially is the case that uh, uh, if there is a, like a kernel, then the running time can be instead of f of k times n to the order one, it can be f of like f prime of k plus n to the order. Now, uh, this is interesting. So uh, uh, it, it, what's the meaning of that? It means that if we have a kernel, then we have such a fixed parameter algorithm. That's even better because it is n to the order one plus f of f prime of k instead of times f prime of k. However, the reverse also is correct. You can prove that the kernel exists if and only if the problem is fixed parameter to act. So there is a kernel for the problem. So we can do this one if and only if this problem is fixed parameter track. It's not I mean, hard theorem, like a Q theorem, you can I mean, search for it. I think we are talking about it in the book and also you will find it on the web. So kernel and fixed parameter are uh, essentially the same things in a sense. And Note that in general, f of k can be exponential in k, but uh, so, so when we are getting this f of k, so uh, f of k in the kernel, so when we get this, the size of this new instance, which is f of k, so I mentioned, so the size of this is f of k, so the size. So when the size is f of k, and we generally, I mean, this f of k can be exponential. However, uh, it would be a good kernel if the site is polynomial. It means that it is k to the order one. Or even be linear, f of k is order. Okay. So you get essentially a problem of size n, which is very large. You want to get some small instance. This is a small instance, I mean, it might be, like, and you can show that for some problems actually, uh, Polynomial kernel does not exist, again, under some complexity assumption. But uh, it would be great if that exists and it is polynomial in K and even better linear in K. We are giving some examples of this problem for vertex cover. So vertex cover is a problem that essentially is a good, so we always uh, talk about some kind of uh, uh, toy problem and some, when we decide, uh, when we talk about some way of, uh, algorithmically solving a problem, we give some examples at the upper one, then we go to the lower one. Here we are mentioning this one for vertex cover. But anyhow, for, fi uh, for fixed parameter algorithm, there are several techniques. So these are like uh, something called a kernelization that we talk. 
bonded search trees that we will talk actually this bonded search tree is something that we talk for vertex cover a uh, color coding this color coding actually has been uh, designed by uh, professor noga allen and in one of this uh, video that uh, youtube video that i had it like the, we had a live chat with professor noga allen we talk about color coding and he talks actually very nicely what's the meaning of color coding i strongly recommend that you will go there and take a look at that So uh, that is uh, uh, important. Uh, uh, the other, uh, so color coding is important. There is a bond that three bits is playing very important role. Iterative compression, that's also another approach. I mean, graph miners, bond dimensionality is the important one that we designed. So there are several things and it can be a full course on fixed parameter algorithm, actually. Maybe even actually more than one course. Can have an advanced course on that. But here we try to give you a general idea about these algorithms and what we can say in terms of lower rules. So as I mentioned, these are like a, a, like making a theory out of branch and bound or backtracking algorithms. Fixed parameter algorithm or this type of algorithm. Uh, good. So uh, let's go and uh, talk about a simple uh, fixed parameter algorithm for vertex cover. Uh, again, what is the problem? So the vertex cover, the graph, the graph is G, it is given to us, and the parameter K is given to us. And you want to see whether there are K vertices such that each edge should be attached. I mean, essentially, one of the endpoints should be here. So if this is a vertex cover, you should not have some edge like this, that none of them belongs to this guy's assertive guy. Is the definition clear? Uh, good. So uh, let's start, I mean, to see how, like you want, you are given K and you want to see whether this graph has a vertex cover of size K or not. Um, great. And uh, again, I want to emphasize, so these are very, I mean, just important things because uh, like, uh, just think about, I mean, you want to solve a problem. So I will give this example, essentially. You want to create, a set, this problem is actually very similar to, in, in a sense to this problem, that you want to create some fire stations in a city. So uh, you may, you say you want to get, create five fire station in the city or like 10 fire station in the city. And say the end, the number of places that you can do it, I don't know, it is something like 1000 places that you can create. So if you want to just do some naive algorithm and say, n to the k generally is very easy if you want to solve a problem, just choose any subset of size k. This is n choose k subsets and see which one is the best. So that's sometimes kind of, uh, I mean, uh, trying all possibilities. So that you can do it. Uh, however, uh, this would be n to the k, and n to the k, so here, for example, 1,000 to the 10, that would be huge. However, say if we have a, a this FPT, FPT algorithm, even is I don't know, 3 to the k. So it would be 3 to the k times, say, 1,000, or 1,000 to the 2. So that would be 3 to the 10, essentially, in this case. So in that case, it would be 3 to the 10 times, say, 1,000 to the 2. That's a much better algorithm, and you can actually get some meaningful results there. And this is important. So here, for example, if, uh, approximation algorithm might be not the best solution. If you want to create a fire station in a city, you really want to see, can I create 10 uh, fire stations such that each place in the city is uh, like is in a reasonable distance or some distance that we define from one of these fire stations. So in that case, the cost of creating one more fire station is actually like is a lot. 
So it would be great if we can do a bit more computations and compute the best solution. So approximation algorithm is not the best things because even, I don't know, 1.5 approximation, it means five more fire stations. We don't want to do that. We want to get exactly the minimum thing. So in that case, we want to get exact solution. At the same time, it's like 10,000 to the 1,000 to the 10 is just too much. We cannot get any good results, but three to the 10 times 1,000 to the two, that would be a very good result. Something that we can reasonably fast, maybe even you can run the computer for one week, find the solution and then create it. That's good. But of course, we don't want to make, I mean, we cannot run the computer for a few years or if not a few decades to do it. So that's the thing that uh, this fixed parameter algorithm would be very important to have the exact solutions. And uh, where the case that generally the domain like here n is large, but the number, the size of the solution, the parameter, the parameter can be anything essentially. Some it can be like parameter can be the diameter of the graph or some other parameter. But generally, we consider the parameter to be size of the solutions, the fixed parameter. So that's a real world applications of. This. But and now uh, let's go to the, this vertex cover problem. Now uh, let's see what can we do. You will consider an edge. So each edge, one of these endpoints should be selected, correct? So you can say uh, at least uh, this guy or this guy or probably both of them. But if you consider a particular edge, one of them should be in the set. So you will do either this one, one or two or both of them, which is the option three. So uh, here, then you, so you will select one of them in the set and then you will delete this edge. And actually all edges, which is, say if you are selecting one, you're deleting this edge and all other edges that are attached to one because all of them will be covered. And then you will recurse in the graph. And so you will, uh, so uh, that's the way. So for each edge, you are doing one of these, I mean, one of these three choices, and then you will delete this edge. Essentially, it will be edge will be deleted. Probably other edges will be deleted as well, and you will recurse. And uh, that's the things that you are, uh, you are essentially doing this until the, the graph is empty. Let's uh, do some analysis for this algorithm. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, when you do that, so you will try all possibilities here. You will say one, two, or three. One of these options you need. So this edge will be covered either one of the endpoints are covered or both of the endpoints are covered. So at the end, when you reach the graph is empty, just check whether. Uh, selected set so whether this uh, whether selected set is an independent set it's a, is a vertex cover or, and then take minimum over all solutions over all solutions. So you will do that until the graph is empty and then you will see whether this is a solution or not and then you will take the minimum over all possible. Now, what is the claim? If there is a vertex cover of size k, then the depth of this search tree, so this is essentially it's called the search tree because we are considering all possibilities. The depth of this search tree cannot be more than k. Or in other words, if we go to level k plus one, then we can simply say no, because that the problem that we had it was k vertex cover. So this, the problem that we wanted to talk about is the k vertex cover. So 
whether the solution of size, vertex cover of size k exists in the graph or not. So why is it the case? So if we go to the level, uh, see what will happen. So uh, you have essentially a, a solution. So you are selecting one edge. Then this edge, one of the endpoints will be selected or both of them. Then you will go, then this edge will be deleted. The next edge that you are doing that, again, you are doing these operations for that. And so on and so forth. If you go actually to, if this, the number of these guys becomes K plus one, if you go to k plus one, then, then we know that for sure the size of the vertex cover for this graph should be more than k, because each of these edges needs at least one vertex to be covered. That's the reason that if the depth of this tree goes greater than k, then you can stop and say, no, there is no such thing. So now what is the running time of this algorithm? We know that the depth of this is at most k, so, and for each of them, we have three choices. I mean, either select this guy or this guy or select both of them. The same thing here, three options, three options, three options. What is the depth of this is K. So the running time of this algorithm would be three to the K. And then actually it is three to the K plus some N to the some constant. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can actually do it into the order one or linear. And again, a fixed parameter, as we mentioned it because of the real, uh, so fixed parameter, f of k times n and f of k plus n are essentially the same because of the canalization. So you can do this uh, uh, three to the k plus n, say in this case, or n to the two, that's the algorithm or you can have actually three k times to the n, no difference. Uh, and then you can improve this one actually to better, something like two to the k times n. And even better. Uh, so this algorithm, you can do it. Uh, there is another algorithm much more complicated. The best thing that we have it is this one, 1 1.2738 to the k plus kn. That's the best algorithm that exists for in this paper as far as I remember. And of course, improving this constant would be a nice thing. So if you can improve it further, that would be the best. How much we can, so if, of course, if it becomes very close to one, it means that this part would be, uh, the running time would be much smaller because the rest of that is just Kn. So it is a very good run. So this is the algorithm. This is essentially something that we call it bonded search tree algorithms. Because this search to be all possibilities, this pack tracking, we say that the depth of them is at, is at most k. So this one for k vertex cover, let me clear everything. Now, let me give you also a kernelization for vertex cover. So here, a simple canalization for vertex. So what was canalization again? So the canalization is that the graph has size n, and we want to see whether there's a k vertex. Good. So k and n is the part. Now, uh, how can we do that? So generally, I mean, a set of operations that we need to do that such that we can get uh, this result. So the first thing is that any vertex whose degree is greater than k plus one. So degree greater than k. Degree of v. So if the degree of v is greater than k, what's the meaning of that? It means that this vertex should be in the k vertex cover. Again, we want to see whether the graph has a vertex cover of size k. So we know that uh, uh, then if the, the degree is greater than k, then v should be in the vertex cover.
So we should be in the vertex car. In uh, that case, so then we can just put V in the, we say that we should be in the vertex cover. So we will put V there and then we remove all the edges at the adjacent to that. And of course, if now you wanted to have the vertex cover of size K in the remaining graph, the vertex cover should be K minus one. So here, the size of the parameter will be essentially decreased. So first for any vertex whose degree is greater than k, we will just do this one. We say that this vertex should be in the vertex cover. And note that here, why this should vertex should be there? Because if this vertex is not in the vertex cover, then you need to put at least k plus one other vertices here, and the size would be greater. That's the reason that this vertex should be good, always in the vertex. So first, we are essentially putting any vertex of degree more than, I mean, k actually. Uh, so any vertex of more than k, uh, it should be in the vertex cover, uh, as I mentioned. So we will put this one and we will just decrease from or budget the number of these vertices. Of course, if the number of these vertices is already more than K, then we can say there is no vertex cover. Now, so uh, we are doing this and we are, that was the whole idea that we are doing some pre-processing in the graph. So what do we do? First, we are finding the degree and then we will put all these vertices. So here uh, you see that the size of this, uh, uh, the size of this, so we had NK, now we have, so, so far we have it N and K prime, where the K prime is less than K. Because some vertices should be in this vertex cover. Now, Say there is no vertex of degree more than K. What do we do here? You are finding a maximal matching. So, uh, you are trying to find a maximum. What is the maximal matching? So, maximal matching is a set of edges without common vertices, which is maximal. What's the meaning of maximal? Means that you cannot add any more edges to that. So, that's generally when you say maximal or minimal, is that you cannot do anything. Like if this is maximal, you cannot add anything more to that. This is different from the maximum, means that uh, it's essentially that should be the optimum solution over all possibilities. Here, so that I cannot add any more edges. So maximal matching is like much simpler problem than maximum matching. And of course, maximum matching always is a maximal matching because you cannot add anything to the optimum. Now, so the only thing is that we are just adding this, consider a maximal matching. So it means that we cannot add any more edges to the distance. So you cannot, there is no other extra edges like this, other what we have. So this is the maximal matching and none of them share any entries. Now, if the size of this becomes greater than K, what will happen? If the size of this maximal matching is greater than K, in that case, again, it means that no vertex cover of size P. No K vertex. So if the size becomes greater than K, then there is no vertex, uh, no vertex cover, no K vertex cover. That's like similar to the one that we have discussed for that bonded search tree algorithm. So now what is the remaining thing? So we know that there are at most K vertices here. We know that the degree of each of these vertices in this graph is at most K. So the degree, each, degree of each vertex V is less than or equal to K as well. That's the part, that's the one that we got it from here. So it means that the total number of vertices in this graph 
can be essentially 2k times k. So this is the number of vertices. So this is the number of is less than this one. So that's exactly this concept of kernel. So what do we get is, so from NK, we get some graph, like this is two K to the two and some K prime, that K prime is less than K. So uh, from this graph, we have done some preprocessing. We remove some vertices, essentially of degree greater than K. And then we mentioned that there should be at most matching of size K otherwise, uh, and all of them, you can do it in order n to the order one. And then when we are done, we checked it, and we know that the size of this graph can not be more than two to the k time. Two to the k, and the parameter would be something which is less than k prime. K prime because of this one that we are putting some vertices here. Now, here it means that, as I mentioned, we have a kernel of size k to the two. So here order k to the two. So we have k to the two uh, uh, vertices here we are talking about, and k to the two edges because these guys have at most k. And there is no such edge here, as I mentioned. There is no two vertices here that that is, so there is no other edges other than those things that are ad essentially adjacent to this two to the two times k vertices. Because if there is such edge, then we could add that one to the matching guess. So it means that there is no other edges. So we get essentially this graph that we have, it has order k to the two vertices and k to the two edges. However, note that uh, you can have k to the two edges while the graph has only order k vertices. Uh, which is actually uh, interesting. So uh, you can actually do better than that. So in terms of edges, actually this is the best. So uh, we can say under this complexity assumption, what is the complexity assumption? Uh, it is co-NP is a subset of NP slash poly. Uh, I mean, this is essentially very similar to, we discuss about NP and co-NP and I mean, this is the relation, some complexity assumption. And we were discussing that people believe that NP and CoNP are not the same as well. So, and this one says that uh, unless this CoNP is a subset of NP slash poly, then we cannot have a kernel of size k to the two minus epsilon edges. So, this k to the two that we obtain for the number of edges actually is the best that we can have. Uh, you, you cannot have a, 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 essentially a kernel that the size is two to the minus epsilon, like K to the 1.99. However, in terms of edges, in, this is in terms of edges. What about in terms of vertices? So uh, the question is that can we have two minus epsilon times K for some epsilon greater than zero? So I don't know, 1.99 K vertices for this graph such that the size of the kernel is, I don't know, 1.99 times k. This problem is still low. And uh, the best, uh, I think the best thing that we have it, uh, the number of uh, vertices in a kernel can be actually as low as uh, two times k minus c like k for some constant c. So you can actually, there are some kernels uh, as we mentioned in this paper, that the number of vertices is actually 2k minus some little o of k. So this is 2k minus little o of k. That exists. But can we get 2 minus epsilon for some constant, like 1.99 times k? That's a big open problem, actually. So uh, this one that we have mentioned, the number of vertices and edges, both they were order k to the two, but this one is a much better in terms of number of vertices. In terms of number of edges, it's still k to the two. So this is the concept of kernel. 
and the game engine. So for example, in terms of ages, it is K to the two. So for some problems, actually, you can say again, under some complexity assumption, there is no polynomial kernel, actually. So there is no need to have a polynomial kernel. But for several problems, also there are linear kernels. Linear kernel would be very good because then the running time of any algorithm would be linear. Any questions? <clears throat> Good. So, Uh, good. So, so far we talk about, I mean, some uh, nice algorithms and we gave some algorithm for vertex cover, which is fixed parameter and also kernelization. Now, <laughs> that's as we always do, we try to go and see what about the hardness? <laughs> what is the best that we can do it for some of this problem? So to build a complexity theory for parameterized problem, we always have these two things assumptions and reductions, but always we have this. So we need to have an appropriate notion of reduction. If we just say polynomial time reduction, that is not enough, as we discussed here. We need something actually, which is specific for fixed parameter algorithms. And some appropriate uh, hypothesis, which is essentially the assumptions. So we have this concept of reductions and this concept of assumptions. Good. So uh, let's see this example. Um, so the, why I want to say that the polynomial time uh, algorithm is not enough. So uh, consider this case. So a uh, graph G has an independent set of size K. So what is the independent set we discussed again? This is a set of edges that there, there is a set of vertices that there is no edges in between. If and only if, if, if it has a vertex cover of size N minus K. Why? I mean, that's, I have already mentioned. So if they have some kind of vertex cover here, then we know that there is no edges here that does not have any endpoints here. And this the vice versa as well. So you can say that if you have considered essentially a, an independent set in the graph, then uh, essentially if you consider all the set of edges, all the rest of the set of vertices, they should cover all edges because uh, here, if there was another, so each edge that you are considering it, should be attached to one of these guys essentially, or between these guys. So this, the rest of the vertices, so you can consider that if there is a vertex cover, then the rest of the vertices is the independent set. And if there's an independent set, the rest of the vertices are, uh, is a vertex cover. So this reduction, this transforms an independent set of size G and K into a vertex cover instances of size G and N minus K. So an instance of GK goes to an instance of G and minus K. Now, interestingly, as we have seen vertex cover actually is a fixed parameter algorithm. But it is uh, independent set is not known to be in FPT. 
indeed we believe that it's not there is no fixed parameter algorithm for that and note that this is just i mean uh, i mean a simple polynomial time reduction so if there's a vertex cover from vertex cover actually we can give a reduction so if there's a problem you want to find the independent set you just find the independent set and then <laughs> like if you want to find a vertex cover so what do we do first we are finding a maximum independent set and then we just take the rest of the vertices so everything is just order n essentially after solving this independence or vice versa but one of these problems is fixed parameter the other one is not so here that's the whole thing that the polynomial reductions are not good enough for us we need to be more careful so uh, let me delete this one Good. So, uh, so, what is the parameterized reduction which is good? So, a parameterized reduction from problem P to problem Q. So, whenever it is the case, we want to solve problem P using problem Q. So, we say that there should be a function phi with the following properties. First, phi of x can be computed in time f of k times x to the order one, where k is the parameter space. So here so far is good. So it just says that the running time should be f of k times n to the order one. So essentially it should be fixed parameter algorithm. Of course, in the previous case for vertex cover and the independent set, there was such an algorithm. Uh, uh, phi of x is a yes instance for q if x is a yes instance of p. That is also, I mean, easy because you can just negate the vertex cover and independent set and say that that was if and only. If it is if and only, if we have this property. So these two still cannot uh, rule out that issue that we had it with vertex cover versus uh, independent set. You think the third one is important. If K is the parameter of the instance X and K prime is the instance of the parameter Y of X, then K prime should be less than g of k for some function of g. So what was the reduction that we had it? So we had essentially n and k for vertex cover. Then we have this uh, n and n minus k for independence. The issue is that this new parameter n minus k is not a g of k. And it is not, so this n to the k is not, g of k. That's the thing that we need to have. So it should not change the parameter from k to n minus k. It should not bring n to the thing. I mean, it could be exponential in k, that's fine. But it should not have parameter n there because n can be very large and doing that. That's exactly the issue that we had this time. Uh, so now, uh, uh, and if we have this problem, then we when we have especially the third condition. So this this is a condition one, two, and three. So three is especially very important. If we have that one, if we have a parameterized reduction from problem P to Q, then it means that Q should be FPT also if P is in FPT. Because all of this now, that's exactly the idea that we don't change the parameter. Everything would be a still function of Q. So in the transformation that we mentioned for vertex cover to independent set, we go from G of K to G of N minus K. And this is not a fixed parameter reduction or parameterized reduction. However, there is another one. Uh, this is the consider the independent set versus Kilik. So, if, uh, I mean, independent set, of course, we know we want to find a set of vertices, K independent set, K vertices, no edges, and the Kilik, K vertices, all edges. So, what can we do? We can always get the, if you are given an instance of independent set, 
So then you can just get the complement. This is G. Then we get the complement of G. That any two edges that are essentially here, we will don't put it here. And if any edges are not here, we will put it there. So we get this complement. Then independent set becomes click. The interesting thing here is we have NK here. We have NK here as well. So the parameter K does not change it. It's still the thing. So in that case, actually, there is a parameterized reduction from independent set to click or vice versa. But not between click and vertex cover because this parameter in minus k has the problem. Mm. Good. So let me do these things. Uh, great. Now, uh, let's talk also about assumptions. So we talk about uh, reductions. Now let's talk about assumptions. So the main assumption is this one, the click hardness, the one that I have mentioned. So for K click or K independent set, we cannot uh, essentially solve it in F of K to the end to the order one. So essentially it means that if you want to solve a K click, as I mentioned, always if you want to, some problem K click or K independence or anything, you can just try all subsets of size K. So you can do it N choose K, the running time would be N to the K. Order. Good. And that essentially says that we, for K click, we cannot do anything better than that. There is another assumption, which is, of course, is a familiar one, exponential time hypothesis. So it appeared in different places as well, this one. It says that n variable tree set cannot be solved in time two to the n. So n variable tree set cannot be solved, uh, uh, cannot be solved essentially in two to the little o of n. We had a strong version. It says that actually it should be, it cannot solve to the 1.999 to the n as well. But here, it just said that you cannot solve it in two to the little of n. And there is a paper, Chen et al. in 2004, you can see it in the book as well, that they show that actually the second conjecture implies the first conjecture. So essentially, ETH is one of the main conditions, main uh, uh, assumptions that we are currently using for this problem, for fixed parameter algorithm. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, so they say that if you are assuming ETH, also it implies that click cannot be solved in this time. So, in, so then, of course, now that you know that click cannot be solved in this time, then you can just use click for problems that are easier. And we will see some of these examples. Uh, so that's a conjecture. So the main conjecture that we are doing, so the main assumption would be essentially it. That's that does not have two to the little of n algorithm. You see, that's like the, uh, in some sense, we say that uh, we are reaching a nice state. I mean, in some senses that like, if you want to get anything better, you only need to first solve that better than two to the n. Or even not even uh, two to the little o of n, or even not two to the little o of n. You do it 1.9999 to the n. That also we don't know. The only thing is that essentially get two to the n. Just consider all variables consider all possibilities and see whether any of them is satisfiable. That's the trivial algorithm and nothing better than that we can do in polynomial. And no difference even for quantum for this problem. Uh, great. So uh, we have, this is the assumption and reduction. Now uh, we, as I mentioned, this you can see it in the paper, but here I want to talk more about the k click and the, some of the other versions that actually help to uh, get uh, problems uh, easier to solve. So uh, let me just um, clear all the right.
Uh, good. So uh, let me say this one. Uh, this is an interesting. Uh, problem so one problem which is very useful and i mean this again so we are building the same thing so like the fixed parameter algorithms or for example for three sum all pair shortest path we are trying to create more and more problems which are useful for us we mentioned the main assumption of hardness is eth but the click also comes from that so we can use the click now i'm introducing another problem which is called multicolor click what is the, this is very useful essentially it's a variant of click which is very useful uh, in getting the FPT reduction. So uh, what is that? So this is the definition. The vertices of the graph input graph G are colored with K colors. So do you have essentially this is the graph G and the vertices have K colors. And this is the color one, two, and K. Okay. And the question that can you find a click containing exactly one vertex, a, essentially from each color class. So this is the graph. This is called a multicolor click. Good. So this problem is called multicolor click. And the the thing is that you want to just essentially k is somehow the number of color that are given to you, and from each class you want to get one. And you can define this one for other problems, like k uh, multicolored independence, the same thing. There are k vertices are given. You want to find an independence that gets one from each vertex. So, uh, Uh, let's uh, get uh, this thing. So there is a parameterized reduction from click to multi -click. Good. So what's the meaning of that? It means that uh, you can solve click with multicolored click. So uh, in the click, you don't have any color K. The issue is that how do you want to do this coloring K essentially? So uh, this is actually a simple reduction. So this is a reduction from K click. So you are given an instance of GK, essentially G, the graph G and K, and the size of G, the number of vertices of V of G is K, is N actually. So from G, we are, I'm constructing a graph G prime. What do we do? I will just take K copies of G. So this is the K copies of G. And then I will put an edge. So I don't put any edge between, so this is the K copies of G and uh, So between any two vertices here, I'm adding an, so between I and J, I will put an H, if and only if there was I and J, the graph, so the same thing here. So any, we are getting between I and J, I will put an H. But I don't put any edges uh, in each copy. So there is no edges in, so each copy essentially would be shallow, no edges there, independence. Good. And what are the color classes that I have? Or this is the first color. So this is the first color. This is the second color. And this is the case color. Then I just solve the problem of click, the multicolor click. Why? Because the multicolor click should find one vertex from each copy such that all of them are connected. So this is the same as click. Joining I and J, uh, you're joining the click of first I graph G one to click of. So, so uh, uh, these are the, so the edges. So I'm just putting essentially these are the V of G. So I will put essentially the copy of the V of G in each of them K copies. 
And there are uh, two, where, two, so what are the edges? If you consider the vertex I here and vertex J here, they have an edge if and only if in the original graph they had an edge. Nothing inside each of these vertices. So in some sense, a click by default cannot have two vertices here because there is no edges in between. Good. So uh, that's actually a, a easy, I mean, th th that's the one that we can say that we can solve K click uh, using multicolored click. Now, can we solve multicolored click using click? Please unmute and answer. Yeah, that's that's not also hard things. Why? Because if you are given a click, if you're given a multicolor click instance, so this is the multicolor. So this is a multicolor instance. Good. So these are the K one, K two, K three, and so on. So, uh, so what do you do? You just delete all edges here. So if you delete all edges in each color class, and they say whether there is a click in the class, so actually then a click can solve multicolor class. Because if when you delete all the edges here, then not it's not possible that there are two vertices here are chosen because then there is a there is no edge between them. So you just make this part empty, and then you just solve the problem for click. So actually click and multicolor click are equivalent in terms of parameters. The same thing for independent set. Independent set and uh, uh, multicolored independent set, these are the same. Now, uh, having these things, so this multicolor gives essentially some useful things that we can, uh, that's actually a nice things uh, that uh, we can use it to prove some other hardness result. So uh, we will talk more about it, but so far we have discussed about the parameter deductions and the assumption that assumption was first was ETH, like uh, that exponential time hypothesis for SAT. Then we talk about click, and then we mentioned multicolor click. So color, multicolor click or click, uh, click, the best thing that we can do for them is N to the K, and we don't know any solution better than that. And N to the K is trivial, just choose all sets of size K. Good. So I think uh, that's for today and we will continue more on that in the next uh, few sessions that we have. So let me... Oh, great. Okay, so we are finishing the class. Thank you and bye.